Cheatham's Library, as I'm sure we all know, is the oldest surviving public library in Britain. It was founded in 1653 in the will of Humphrey Cheatham. The building complex that the library occupies, however, is much older than the library's creation. Indeed, it was founded in 1421 to accommodate a college of priests associated with the collegiate church, now cathedral, which is a stone's throw away. This complex, including cloisters for example, um, was built in the medieval Gothic style, fashionable and appropriate to the time. When the library came to be founded in 1653, the executors of um, Humphrey Cheetham's will purchased this complex of buildings, which by this stage had suffered significant neglect and was um, crumbling. In part, this was courtesy of its role in the Civil War, serving as a jail and an armory. The complex, however, was um, acquired and converted into this library. What we see today may appear to be mid-17th century, but in actual fact there is an accumulation of material and furniture, particularly um, in the 18th and 19th centuries, that I'm going to look at in this lecture today. In particular, the beginning of the 19th century witnessed a number of interesting and important additions to the library's furnishings. Firstly, we can see this, a what is effectively a um, bookcase, um, of which on the front, at the very top, is um, inscribed within the oak, the gift of Humphrey Cheetham Esquire, 1655. This um, bookcase is actually not what it appears to be. It was not originally made as a bookcase, but in actual fact was made around about the um, 1510s or thereabouts, 1510s, 1520s, certainly the beginning of the 16th century, as a bed, very much along the lines of those which I'm showing you on screen now. This bed um, was made um, for Adam Hulton um, at the beginning of the 16th century in imitation of um, a bed that came up to Lancashire. Uh, this bed uh, was made in approximately um, 1485 in time for the January um, 1486 wedding of Henry VII and Elizabeth of York. This royal bed is distinguished particularly by the uh, diamond diaper shapes carved into the um, posts at the front at the foot and the head of this bed um, supporting a tester. So this bed is what we would now refer to as a four-poster or state bed, but in reality should be named a tester bed. We can see this diaper pattern applied to both the front and rear posts incorporated into the a bookcase that we can see in Cheatham's. Similarly, if we pay attention to the uh, friezes running along the rails, these front parts to um, the shelves and the top cresting, we can see this undulating um, S-shaped um, riseau pattern where leaves alternate with flowers. And both above and beneath we can see this uh, once again, undulating, um, curved-shaped uh, pattern 
um, known as brattishing. Uh, what is effectively an engrailed um, continuous uh, uh, leaf pattern, um, as well as the frieze with alternating um, flowers and leaves, can similarly be found on the Henry VII and Elizabeth of York bed. Um, notably, however, the panelling found um, at the back of this uh, bookcase is not um, in imitation of that found on the uh, marriage bed, but other derivative beds produced in Lancashire at the time. For example, uh, for the Molyneux family at Sefton Hall, um, this example here for Adam Halton from Halton Park, um, and also the um, Stanley, um, the Stanley bed, uh, which was in the possession of um, James Dearden of Rochdale Manor um, or the Orchard um, at the beginning of the 19th century. And this is crucial um, later on because one of Dearden's um, antiquary friends, George Shaw, which I'll look at um, in a moment in his contribution to the library, um, has distinct parallels in the form and ornament of the panelling we find on this bookcase and um, the bed itself. So, this engraved dedication, uh, the gift of Humphrey Cheatham, Esquire, 1655, um, is entirely bogus. If we turn to the side of the bookcase, we will find a brass panel, which is now very um, heavily cleaned and um, rubbed off, um, which states that it is presented, or rather, it was presented to Cheatham's Hospital, the library, by William Hulton, uh, one of the FIFAs um, in 1827. Therefore, you can see the relationship between the um, claimed um, age and provenance of this bookcase and, in actual fact, um, its actual um, date of presentation to the library. In other words, um, significantly later. If we actually pay close attention to the carved decoration of the posts and the back panel, which we can see here on the screen, you can see the repeated diaper work, um, this um, uh, arabesque S-shaped um, decorative floral decoration, including uh, leaves and uh, flowers on the panels. Um, these contrast very, very clearly with the much more modern, flat, highly polished um, shelves installed um, to create this bookcase. Therefore, you can see a relationship between the true um, ancient um, 16th century work and the newer woodwork added to complete uh, what is known as a cut and shut uh, piece of furniture. This cut and shut furniture effectively includes old and new material to create something that appears to be of age uh, but is in actual fact a modern construction. So um, around about 1826, um, 1827, this bed um, originally made for Adam Halton, as I've said, um, directly derived from the Henry VII and Elizabeth of York bed, was reconfigured and then in turn passed on as a gift to the library. Crucially, the library was significantly um, refurbished and added to um, subsequently by uh, George Shaw of Upper Mill in Saddleworth just on the edge of modern-day Greater Manchester, but actually within Yorkshire, um, according to the county lines drawn up today. George Shaw is this curious, curious figure who was interested in the historic past, who amassed pieces of ancient um, carved furniture, produced his own derivative furniture, visited country houses in the region, um, including Tabley Hall, um, uh, to name just one, but uh, 
working for his father's um, mill business. He toured um, the country going as far as Abbotsford, so Sir Walter Scott's baronial country house um, in Roxburghshire in um, Scotland um, and also as far down as Staffordshire. Um, so George really was exposed to a terribly broad range of material and he was interested in ancient furniture, ancient buildings, country houses, interiors and heraldry. Indeed his interest in Gothic architecture and heraldry can be traced to his first diary and shows a desperate need to understand and consume knowledge about um, medieval Gothic architecture and also heraldry. The 13th of November 1847, there is a record of George Shaw having worked at Cheetham's. Uh, recorded in The Guardian, um, I read the extract as follows. Cheetham's College, this fine old conventional building which, as our Manchester readers know, is situated behind the collegiate church, now the cathedral, and which was built in the time of Henry VI, has recently been undergoing partial repairs by order of the FIFAs under the direction of Mr George Shaw, architect of St Chad's, Upper Mill, Saddleworth. The windows in the gable facing the principal entrance from the town, constructed of the soft red sandstone from Collyhurst, has become much dilapidated, and the rest of the gable being in a very decayed state, it was judged expedient to recase the whole, preserving the style of architecture to the exact measurement of the original windows, but renewing them in Rochdale summit stone as less liable to decay that for the wall being from Collyhurst as before. The chimney having been added subsequently to the first erection and not in the same style a new one has been substituted more in harmony with the edifice. A window of the time of James I has also been given a place um, to a truffle-headed window of three lights, copied from one of the original old ones in the building. Internally, no changes have yet taken place, but it is proposed to remove the wretched fireplace and grate in the council room, which is the worst style of George III's reign, and to erect in its place a facsimile of the old arched stone chimney yet remaining but at present covered by the obnoxious modern one. In the arch, which will be made smaller than the original to suit modern ideas of comfort, instead of the present grate, will be a rare dos and dogs or andirons with the arms of Henry the Seventh, and with a movable grate for the burning of coal. When this is finished, and an ugly modern deal partition removed, which now hides some portion of the panelling, this room will be sufficiently restored. The panelling is not older than the time of Elizabeth, as also the ornamental plasterwork above it and below the mouldings of the roof are most likely attributable to the temp James I. The ceiling or roof is original and very good, with moulded beams and exquisitely carved bosses at their intersections. In the reading room, no alteration is proposed, though here again a similar Georgian fireplace of the meanest possible description. The panelling is the same period as that of the council chamber below, but above this, upon the wall over the fireplace, are a series of carvings referable to the time of Queen Anne or William III, and covered with a profusion of colours and gilding. The roof is very handsome and coeval with the building. As we can see from this report in the Guardian, George Shaw superintended work to repair um, Cheatham's library, notably um, the now um, decrepit, uh, much badly weathered uh, windows um, were replaced in a style 
almost exactly identical to that what had been uh, there originally, um, uh, but uh, needed to be replaced. Similarly, um, other styles of windows from later periods, um, after the original erection of the building um, in the 15th century, were replaced with other examples that match the style and appearance of the original. Therefore, Shaw was ensuring a cohesive style throughout uh, the building's exterior. On the interior, we can see, uh, particularly uh, in reference to the fire back, um, there was a wish to create the impression of age uh, relative to the building's um, history. So, for example, the arms of Henry VII are being uh, applied to um, this, this fire back, which we can see here on screen today. And George Shaw's creation of this fire back with Henry VII's arms specifically um, associates the building um, with the historical period within which um, certain parts of it um, are dated. Notably, we can see um, the quartered arms of Henry VII on the fire back, um, so quarters one and four being France modern, the three fleur de lis, and quarters two and three, um, the three lions, um, are held by, on the left, a dragon, and on the right, a collared greyhound, and the shield is um, surmounted by an imperial crown. The actual shape of the shield being this um, barbed shape um, relates to the type of shield um, found in the Tudor period and which we can see um, used on the bed um, which um, George affixed atop um, the entrance to his um, drawing room in his uh, library now, the public library um, in Uppermill. These arms, uh, in particular the, the supporters, are what we um, very frequently see um, Henry VII being um, referred to by. Uh, certain aspects of George Shaw's work for Cheatham's Library, on the other hand, show a very irregular um, use of um, supporters and arms um, to refer to Henry VII, uh, which I will um, turn to look at next. And these um, fragments actually taken from the Henry VII and Elizabeth of York bed, these pieces of medieval spolia, which had been disassociated from the bed, uh, most likely in the 18th century, um, were used by George Shaw, incorporated into pieces of furniture that he in turn supplied to um, the library. Um, once again, um, presenting, in this case, genuine examples of um, historic woodwork to really create um, a very overt um, historicizing interior um, for the library. He supplied a chair, a suite of chairs and a table, um, which we can see on screen now. Um, the table is very much um, in a style that was... Um, common in the 19th century in that it was fashionable. Certain aspects of its design um, are absolutely gothic. If you pay attention to the legs, for example, you can see the cusped panels inserted on the faces of the legs. And if you look to the outside um, of the tabletop, you can see the brattishing style um, of ornament, which we find, for example, on the um, Adam Houlton bed, now bookshelf, as well as the Henry VII bed. Therefore, we can see Shaw blending both fashionable uh, modern styles of Gothic furniture design, um, so Gothic revival or neo-Gothic, um, with traceable examples of ornament taken from um, a piece of, or pieces rather, um, of genuine Tudor work. The suite of chairs accompanying it uh, are notable for the um, 
profile of their back, this round-headed form. This matches um, a style of chair which the very well-renowned um, Gothic revivalist architect from the 19th century, A.W.M. Pugin, proposed um, in his publication of 15th century furniture. Um, but, crucially, um, if we look um, to the, um, the directly above the upholstered section, we can see a coat of arms um, of uh, Cheatham, um, Sir Humphrey Cheatham, um, inserted upon a shield of the Tudor shape, this barbed shape. So we can see Shaw creating pieces of Gothic style furniture enhanced with heraldry to link um, to link this, the, the new furniture back. Shaw did this repeatedly for numerous clients. Um, and in actual fact, he used heraldic devices such as this as an essential component of the furniture he produced for other aristocratic clients. The difference is that for some clients, we know that he claimed such furniture was um, supposedly um, genuine ancient examples uh, from numerous families' um, ancestral um, houses, which he had managed to rather successfully um, gather together, locate, and is now selling on um, for relatively bargain prices um, to use um, his terms. There is, however, no documentation surviving between um, Cheatham's and um, George Shaw that we know of, uh, which could help um, clarify the nature of these productions. But given the style is clearly a, um, a, a Gothic revival form, rather than aping um, traced examples of Tudor furniture, such as, for example, the Henry VII bed, which he in actual fact copied, or the Dukes of Northumberland um, and the Earls of Derby. We can assume that these uh, pieces for Cheatham's are just um, generically um, uh, of an old style intended to um, enhance the interior of the building. His most important contribution is the sideboard, um, which had two um, heraldic achievements um, taken uh, from the Henry VII bed. Um, these uh, display on the left the uh, three fleur-de-lis of uh, France, modern, um, and on the right the three lions uh, representing England, which, when quartered, are the royal arms. Um, the supporters we have are the dragon and the lion, and they are um, surmounted by the imperial crown and the banner, the banderole beneath with the motto Dieu et mon droit um, is the uh, royal motto. Uh, these were used on the bed as pillow boards to either side of where you can imagine the pillows uh, would have been. Um, and Shaw inserted them within the sideboard. And this sideboard is very, very clearly a 19th century production um, in the appearance of the uh, wood. Uh, similarly, also a uh, pieces of furniture of this style simply did not exist in the medieval period. If we turn to explore the sideboard, we'll see uh, certain aspects of it mirror the Adam Holton and also the uh, Henry VII bed, namely the diaper pattern applied to the uh, muntings, which separate the panels on the backboard, as well as the clustered columns um, on the uh, door front of the pedestals. We can also find this diaper um, as a backdrop um, above the arches on these doors. Crucially, we can also see the use of the uh, royal arms um, beneath um, the uh, central uh, carved section of this sideboard. You can see on the left is the dragon, and on the right is the college greyhound. This, unlike the supporters found on the genuine pieces of medieval woodwork um, applied um, to the top of the sideboard between these um, uh, pinnacles with crockets and uh, finials, 
um, is of the type that is much more commonly used to represent Henry VII. Uh, but curiously, the arms of England and France are not quartered, but simply impaled. In other words, um, there is a vertical division between the two, um, and they're united um, as two halves rather than uh, as quarters. So this is particularly curious. Um, so both fragments from the bed representing the royal arms and Shaw's recreation of the royal arms present two separate readings of Henry VII's heraldic identity. The more common and accessible version of Henry VII's arms is used on uh, the draw. This is Shaw's 19th century recreation of the arms. The actual arms, um, dated to the late 15th century and taken from the marriage bed, uh, are actually really quite unusual. Therefore, what we have is a juxtaposition between old and new heraldry uh, of the 19th century, which relates to, but is also not quite the same as the original. These pieces of furniture that Shaw supplied, as well as the fire back um, for the audit room, enhance the library's internal fixtures and fittings. So we, uh, although these are not documented um, uh, to a specific time, we can assume that they are around um, 1847 uh, from the time that Shaw was working on the building. So um, late 1847 through to 1848. Um, the impression they give is reviving an, an historical style, um, and as we can see here, by reference to um, the marriage bed of Henry VII, Elizabeth of York, as well as the Adam Holton um, bed come um, bookcase, along with um, actual pieces of incredibly rare, yet uh, incredibly rare and important pieces of salvaged Tudor um, carved woodwork taken from the um, uh, royal uh, marriage bed, we can see Shaw creating this wonderful mixture um, of, of really important old um, as well as new uh, woodwork. Therefore, um, Cheetham's records um, through this um, 19th century furniture, a wonderful intersection between um, old and new, um, even though the new is presented in an old and antiquarian style.